Hello and welcome to my video on blueberry fertilization. So why should we fertilize? Yearly fertilizer applications to blueberries will result in more vigorous growth and it will contribute to greater yields. If you have a fully mature high bush blueberry, you can expect to get 14 to 16 pints per plant. Blueberries are a bit fussy concerning their nutrients. They don't like nitrate forms of nitrogen and chloride forms of potassium, which is what you find in most fertilizer mixes. But organic fertilizers are generally okay. An ideal analysis for blueberries is 20% nitrogen, no phosphorus, 10% potassium, and 5% magnesium. Normally on a fertilizer bag, all you see is the first three numbers, NPK. To determine the nutrients that are required, it would be advisable to take a soil test. And you can call your local land-grant university cooperative extension office in Michigan, is called MSU Extension, and they can give you all the details on how to take soil tests in your, in your state. You're not likely to find a 20-0-10-5 fertilizer analysis unless you're in a blueberry growing area. So I suggest making your own. Now, when we look at that analysis, the ratio of nutrients to each other is two parts nitrogen, of course, zero phosphorus, one part potassium, and 0.5 parts magnesium. Many times people will use ammonium sulfate, which is 2100, as their source of nitrogen because it is an acidifying fertilizer and it tends to lower the pH because blueberries like pHs between four and five. So to make the mix using 2100, use one measure. Now a measure can be a cup, it can be a bucket, whatever you need to do. If you plan to use urea, as a source of nitrogen, which is 4600, you would use half that amount. Of course, we don't need any phosphorus. And if we're using potassium sulfate for our potassium source, which is 0050, you need one fifth of a part. And then for magnesium, we're going to use magnesium sulfate or Epsom salts, and that's about nine to 10% magnesium and you would use one-tenth of a part. If you want your mix to be an organic mix, you can use the following ingredients. First, we're going to use 1200 or blood meal as our source of nitrogen. And your amount that we'd use would be one and three quarters parts. For potassium, we're going to use a one-half part of a material called Langbenite organic fertilizer, which is 0020. And this is an OMRI approved material, which is the Organic Materials Review Institute. And then for magnesium, we're going to use one half part Monterey LG7220 Epsom salts for plants. That's 10%. And that's also an OMRI approved material. I'm not sure about blood meal. It probably depends on where the blood meal is coming from. Let's talk a little bit about how much you need to apply. For newly planted bushes, you fertilize about two to four weeks after you put the plants in the ground. Use one ounce of your mixture and place it in a ring 10 to 12 inches from the base of the plant. Assuming that you've run a soil test and all your other nutrient levels are what they should be, you may just need nitrogen and you would still do the same thing if you were using 2100 or whatever you still put on the same amount one ounce one ounce of 2100 if it was urea you'd use a half an ounce because it's twice as concentrated and then if you were using something like dried blood meal as your source of nitrogen since it's only 12 percent you'd put on twice as much you would put on two ounces now as the plants get older we increase the amount that we give them and we enlarge the ring where we place the, the fertilizer. For instance, if you have a two to three year old plant, you give them two ounces and you put it in a two foot ring. If it's a four to five year old plant, three ounces in a three foot ring. And then it keeps going up an ounce a year until you reach year 10. 
When you reach year 10, you're going to a maintenance level and you only need three ounces and you put that on in a ring that's four feet across. If you have a larger planting, say acres for instance, then there's a chart on the screen that will show you how much you need to apply and uh, we're talking about how much nitrogen you need to apply and how much you would use if you were using urea and how much you would use if you were using ammonium sulfate. And this is on a per acre basis. Apply your fertilizer between bud break and bloom. If you're on a sandy soil, you might want to split your applications into two. Apply the first one before bud break and the other half in early to mid-June. This will help maintain available nitrogen until harvest. If the plants are growing on a heavier textured soil, one application is going to be sufficient. If all you need is nitrogen, use ammonium sulfate if the pH is above 5 and urea or blood meal if it is below 5. I want to make a special note here too, urea is not used in organic production. You can use blood meal and you might want to check because not all blood meals will be acceptable. Or you can use a neem seed meal which is 6% nitrogen so you're going to have to use about three times as much and it's also 1% phosphorus which you don't really need unless the soil test tells you you do and it's 2% potassium. If pH is a problem on your soil then it can be lowered somewhat by the acidifying fertilizers like the potassium sulfate and the ammonium nitrate but you can also lower it using sulfur but Ideally, you want to get the pH down to the range you want before you put the blueberries in. You can put some sulfur around the plants after they've been planted, but you have to keep it at very low rates because when bacteria are breaking down sulfur in the soil, there is a production of sulfuric acid, and if there's too much of that, it can damage the plants. Also, don't apply any fertilizer after June to avoid a late growth flush which may not have time to harden off in the fall and it might result in cold temperature injury to your plants. If you want to monitor how well your fertilizer program is working, you can submit samples to your land grant university. Collect at least 50 healthy leaves in midsummer, which is usually around July from various bushes. When the results come back, if the percentage of nitrogen in the leaves is less than 1.7%, then you need to increase your rate a bit. But if the percentage exceeds 2.3%, then you need to reduce your rates. Most home growers don't bother to do this, but it is a good way to determine if your plants are getting the right amount of nitrogen. I hope this has been helpful, and the fertilizer certainly will be helpful for your plants. And if you have any questions, again, you can email me at heilig h-e-i-l-i-g at m-s-u for Michigan State University dot e-d-u which is for education or you can just make a comment in the uh, YouTube comment section and I'll eventually get to it because right now I am getting an awful lot of comments. Thanks for listening and this is Gary and that's it for today.